Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special presentation. Nate, owner of the Predators, I'm going to give the microphone to you. Welcome, everybody. Glad to see everybody out there tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you for showing up. Tonight's kind of a special night for us. We got a couple special young fellas right here that the Orlando Predators would like to make honorary Predator members. So, in record recognition of Cameron Duran, we would like to present this award to you, making you an honorary team member, recognizing and supporting children with disabilities and their family. And we also have another special gentleman here tonight. On behalf of the Orlando Predators, we would like to make you an honorary Predator member, honoring you and your family. Thank you guys very much. Hey fans, what a great special recognition. Nate Starlin and Chris Siegfried in the house tonight, the commissioner of the NAL. And, and one more thing guys, if it wasn't for all of you guys in the stands supporting us right now, we wouldn't be able to do this. So this is the platform that we want to continue with here on out through next year as we grow. Thank you for sticking with us. And we'll look forward to seeing you all next year. Fans, give it up one more time for Nate Star. I tell you what, let these kids hear you. This is a special moment. Thanks for your support. That is really, really cool. Always part of the Predator Nation. There's Mary Beth. Mary Beth, you're doing a great job for the Predators. Thank you, Mary Beth, for your loyal service. Welcome, welcome again for another edition of Fred Talk here at Fish on Fire. I have my very special guest tonight, majority owner of the Orlando Predators, Mr. Nate Starling. Nate, well, everybody at home, first, what you just saw, if you're watching live on Facebook, you just saw some honorary members of the Orlando Predators getting their award from Mr. Starling right there. Uh, Nate, welcome. Welcome to Pred Talk. Thank you for having me. I don't know if you've ever watched the show before, but what we like to do here, we like to have fun. All right, main thing here is have fun, but I mean, I know you. These people right here, they know you, but a lot of the fans out there, all they know is your name. They know, okay, Nate Starling Jr. is now the majority owner of the Orlando Predators. Let's let's hope to God it's better than last year. You know, that's what they're thinking, really, uh, because the 2020 season, of course, got canceled. So what I like to do here is get you some information from you so the people at home can be a little bit more familiar with you, all right? It's like, where, where are you from, Nate? I'm from upstate New York, a little town called the Lockport, just outside of Buffalo. Outside of, so did you grow up a Bills fan? No. Yeah, until I started losing a bunch of money on the, uh, <laughs> on the Super Bowls, but yeah. Oh, yeah, you were up there when they went like four years in a row and uh, four and out? Four they came out. down here in 78, 79, I believe right after the Blizzard 77. So you went, uh, you went to school up there? Yes, sir. Uh, in... In the small town you just said? Yeah. Is it a small town? I, I mean... Well, we st I was born and raised in Lockport, and then we, as I got older, we moved out to a little town called Barker. So we actually grew up on the farm out there, so... Okay. So I guess I'm an old farm boy. So you're an old farm boy. Yeah. How long you been in Florida? Well, since about 78, so... 78. You're, you're this close to being a Floridian. You're not quite a Floridian. I'm not a I've been here since 72 and I'm still not a Floridian, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, you married? Yes. How long? Uh, that one will be, I gotta ask that one right. That'll be 36 years. So, September 1st, and the anniversary. So, I have been blessed to have my wife by my side, especially the last couple years. <laughs> <laughs> last couple of years. <laughs> so, you got kids? Yes, I got three amazing boys. So, uh, I got Nate Jude, Nate the third, and then I have uh, Nick, my middle son, and then I have Brandon, my youngest. All right. I mean, I I know all your boys. You got your your sons are awesome. I, 
I do. I love it. Can you guys hear Nate back there? Can you hear Nate back there, Don? Yes? Okay. Can you hear him, Nikki? Okay, because he wants to talk to you. Um, grandkids? Yes, I have uh, three boys and a granddaughter. So you got three grandsons and a granddaughter? Three grandsons and a granddaughter. I got nine. You're also older than I am. <laughs> you said you wanted to have fun. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I bet your idea of fun. No. <laughs> So what do you, uh, other than the, only the Predators, what, what do you do? What's your job? I actually own a uh, custom hot rod and body shop. Starling and Sons. Starling and Sons. So yes. your, your, your specialty is body work and, and tweaking hot rods? Customizing stuff. I mean, you name it, we do it. So that's what's brought me to the table. So that's been put food on the table for us for many years. Now, I have the inside on one of his toys. When's the Hummer going to be ready and you, you, you show that bad boy off? I've been kind of putting it off. So I actually got the spacers and all that stuff for the wheels. It'll actually probably be coming home in about two weeks. I'm waiting until we move into the new place so I got the garage to park it. You're a busy man. And you just had uh, off-season surgery? Again. <laughs> Again? I tell you what, you're, you're not even on the field playing and you're having off-season surgery both, both, both the last two seasons. I run out there to catch a ball or something and I end up twisting an ankle. So, <laughs> so let me... Uh, how long have you been um, a fan of the Orlando Predators? Pretty much the first game I went to. I mean, we went to the first game, and then I actually bought season tickets out the second game and been a season ticket holder ever since. Ever since. When was that? How long ago was it? Because 91 is when 91 is when the Orlando Predators were born. Yeah, 91 okay. is when it started, and the only time I didn't get tickets is when they actually went over to the college. Over to the CFP Arena. Yeah, because I, I was on the other side of town, so I didn't want to make that drive all the time. I know. I, wait, I still went. I was still a season ticket holder because I lived closer that way. It, for me, it was six of one, half a dozen of the other, but for a lot of the fans, I know we lost like a good... 40% of our fan base, yeah. season ticket holders, go in there and just don't want to do that again. It's, it's not the same. If you're not in the jungle, it's, it's not the same. This is, this is very it's gotta true. got to be the jungle. Oh, there's Mr. Ron Trudico. You have to uh, you have to try one of those uh, predator shots. Oh, no, not um, <laughs> It's just something here that Heather does at Fish on Fire. Makes a, what we call a predator shot. Tastes like Kool-Aid. And when I say, they say, don't drink the Kool-Aid, you can go ahead and drink this Kool-Aid. It's pretty good. How did you get involved in being an owner of the Predators? Because I know last season, last season, um, you were you were the uh, minority owner of the Orlando Predators. This year, you're the majority. So what got you involved in ownership with the Predators? How'd that all happen? Well, Kenny McIntyre was actually selling Aflac, came into my business. So he came in, um, we got to know each other, had a good relationship. He was the only, that's the only jersey that I actually ordered, that I have, is Kenny's jersey. So he got talking and we got, you know, talking and all that. We had, took our pictures and all that stuff. And then a few months later, Kenny come back and said, hey, how would you be interested in uh, jumping on board with me and bringing the Preds back? Is that when you kicked him out? No, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm just kidding. I mean, I mean, contrary to whatever, you know, me and Kenny, there's no ill feelings. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. He brought, he brought the scene back to Orlando. Absolutely. Though we might not have succeeded like we wanted to succeed, Kenny was still a major part of bringing the press back to Orlando. So I give him kudos for a lot of this. I, I, I've got, I, I don't, I got nothing bad to say about him because if it wasn't for Kenny McIntyre, I wouldn't be sitting here next to you. Exactly. You know, so I mean, I've got nothing. I'm not, I won't say any bad things. Karma, karma's a bitch. So I won't say anything bad. You know. Um, what was this? Uh, Last season, last season, because we know Kenny was the majority owner last season. What was really your part of, of the Predators last season? What if, you know, as just try to help out Kenny, you know, do as much as I could possibly do for him, and then also 
giving back to what I wanted. To, the reason why I got into this was to be able to give back to the community. Um, special need kids, all that stuff. That's that's where my heart's at. You know, um, our armed forces. You know what? We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them guys out there fighting for our freedom. Without a doubt. Know? So, a doubt. you know, I got a daughter that's in the Army, and I got a nephew that's in the Marine Corps. So, I mean... A lot of people don't understand. They're easy to judge, but they, you know, oh, until sure. you actually have family that's in the service, you don't know what the other what they're going through. Exactly. I come from a family of military too. My father-in-law was career Navy. My father was in the Navy. My oldest brother in the Navy. My two younger brothers were both Marines. So, you know, I know, I, you know, what it's like, and uh, I stand for the. That's my own thing. I stand. Um, Question about what's happening right now in the NAO. This has been a pretty exciting two weeks that's been going on. It's been a pretty exciting five, six months behind the scenes. Um, honestly, everything's looking really positive. The NAO is growing. Um, just with the AFL folding up, I mean, there's a lot more opportunity to be able to take on more you know, new, new teams. Um, Honestly, I really feel good about it. I mean, we're starting to build, and we'll be able to give our fans what they're asking for, you know? We have, let's see, in the last two weeks, correct me if I'm wrong now, but we've brought three new teams on board in the NAL. I say we. I have nothing to do with it. Um, but we brought Tampa Bay back, so we got the Tampa Bay Tornadoes. Yep. We've got the um, Baltimore Lightning that just got announced, I believe, yesterday or Saturday. It just got announced. And we have the Louisville Extreme. So now we're up to nine teams, and still, it's, I mean, the Fat Lady hasn't sang yet, so it's not over. It's, it's, it's not, not over. It's not over to the Fat Lady sang. Exactly. Like, oh, you, are you offended, Steve? <laughs> um, we have a lot of audience participation, and I bring it. Just have fun with it. Um, what was I going to say? Albany. Now, I know Albany, I, you can't say much now because it's still in the works, but the rumor's out there. Oh, hell, they got out there. They're saying, oh, it's already a done deal. It's a done, but it's still in the works. Nothing is etched in stone yet about Albany, but can you confirm that it's in the works? It is in the works. Um, my partner, Ron, has actually been working that deal. So um, that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it right now. That's where we're going to leave it right there. there. It's in the works. It's, it's in, in the works. works. There's a lot of negotiations going on. <laughs> You're Ron's general manager. <laughs> oh, is that uh, is that oh is that a predator shot? You know exactly what this is. I'm oh, look at it. Hand hand it over my computer. Yep. <laughs> Once it goes, it all goes. <laughs> But as you can see what I'm talking about, if you can look right on there, it's a Orlando Predator shot. It is black and red. I believe it's tequila, grenadine, and a splash of Jaeger on the top. So, without further ado, Nate, here's to the 2021 season. Oh, let me, uh, just so everybody knows that's here in the house. I do have these Orlando Predator Gators up here for sale. So lower it down, I was told. Just so you know, I have them up here. Or see my wife, Mary Lobianco. Orlando Predator Gators right there. You can wear it as a scarf, as a headband. Um, I'll tell you what I wore this weekend when I was in the pool because... Tie your hair back? Because it was... Actually, I was... Mary said she could do a, a ponytail for me, but... I needed something to cover my head and it worked great. Uh, let's see. The other thing here, it's I get the questions all the time. I could I could call him out, but I'm not gonna call him out, Greg Meyer. Um, that uh, fan merchandise. What do we got in the works for a fan merchandise? And I know you got. I mean, I could say it, but it's, it's best coming from you. We're working. 
trust me, we are working really hard on it. Um, matter of fact, I was just talking to Mr. Morris here just before all this started. Um, we got a couple companies that were trying to get stuff done, and with the COVID and then their people being out and everything, has been just a real cluster right now. But we're getting close on getting the stuff done. I know people are hot and heavy after apparel, but I don't want to jump at the first person that will you know, be able to offer it, and we're paying Muco bucks, and then we have to pass that on down to you know, our fans. I don't want to do that. I want to get, I want them to be able to get the best bang for their buck. So, and it's still early. I mean, it's August third. Season's not going to start. Our first name is not going to. Our first name. Our first game is not going to be until uh, April. I mean, we have time. You have time to get your merchandise. Believe me, we, we want to get that merchandise to you as quick as we can, but we want to get it to you at, at the best price possible as well. Okay, that's just, we're not we're not trying to kill anybody, we're trying to save you guys money and make it affordable, okay? Now, off the cards there, I know we have, you're, you're working on a, maybe an online auction. For the jerseys? For, the, for last year's game jerseys. Yep. The ones that we have. Last seasons. Yes, last seasons. Now I will say this here real quick, not not because I like to talk all the time, but I like to talk all the time. That's fine, keep going. Um, a lot of the players last season took their jerseys, didn't turn them in. All right, so some of the jerseys, New Chicago, uh, some of the jerseys won't be on the auction block because players took them with them. And that's understandable. Yeah, I mean, that's understandable. I would have actually had a Balin jersey up there in my office, but, you know, we didn't have that once. We would have had a Not Balin out jersey. Anybody. You know, I don't want to do that. What? Well, don't want to call out Balin. No, no, no way. I love no, Balin. I love Balin. He's good people. Balin was on the show. Boy, I sure love one of them jerseys. I sure would like me a Balin jersey. <laughs> hey, you know, remember Justin Marcus? Of course. <clears throat> I got his jersey. I know. <laughs> Not to rub it in or anything, just saying. <laughs> but for you guys out there, just to reiterate, we're working on the merchandise. As soon as we get something tied down, I was with Nate this afternoon, and he was actually making two different calls, um, trying to work it out and, and get the best price possible. We want to get it to you. Believe me, we do. Um, Nate, what do, you, what do you enjoy most about arena football? Just a high-paced game. I mean, I just love it. I mean, we could be down, and you have, what, you know, a minute left, and you got people getting up, and they're walking out the door, some of them, and you sit there, and all of a sudden, you come, they come right back and win. You know, get an onside kick, and then all of a sudden, bam, you know, we won the game. So, I mean, it's not, it's not over until it's over. It ain't over till it's over. Exactly right. Until that, until that clock says zero, zero, zero on the bottom there, it's not over. Believe me, there's so many games, you can't just name one where it came down and it's like a uh, minute left and, and you leave and it's like, oh yeah, it's still, you know, 40, 48 to 46. Who's going to leave it a 48, 46 game anyhow? But I'm just uh, saying. the game's 48 to 6. I don't bet. I can see him get up and walk out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was in this the is past. a new season now. We're not going to dwell on the past. <laughs> so, Nate, being a, uh, because I know you're a huge Predator fan, what excites you most coming into the 2021 season now about being the owner of the Orlando Predators? Thanks, guys. About, you know, about coming in and being the owner, the majority owner of the Orlando Predators. I mean, a team that you've been following for 20-something years. I think the main thing is, is being able to uh, know, gain the trust back from all our fans, being able to prove ourselves. I was actually going to turn around and walk away. Um, I was going to come back, and I figured this was a redemption year, come back and try to make things work. And, I'm going to be honest with you, I love what I do out there on the field with the kids. That's, I tell you what, that fills my heart. Right. If I didn't do anything else but that, that's all I need to do. I mean, I don't need the recognition of being owner, non-owner, whatever. I know. You know, I know. I want to be able to give back to the community and, and do stuff, you know, for the underprivileged kids and for our enforcers. I mean, I can't, I can't state that enough. 
that's where my heart's at. Yeah. So I'm just when I say it like that there, I'm just showing you respect because you're my boss. You're my boss. You're my friend first, but you're my boss. Right? And I like my job. <laughs> you do a good job. I mean <laughs> So I've I've been to your shop numerous, numerous times. And how do you because when you get out there, I mean, that's probably how you hurt your shoulder. I know it was in the past. How do you balance working so much? Because I, I mean, I see you work and you're just like totally working on cars, you're drenched, you're, you're just man exhausted. And then go home, plus during the season, handle the predator business. How do you do all that at your age? Old school. All I can say is old school. You know, that's the way we were brought up and raised. I mean, you got up early in the morning, you did your chores, you came home from school, you did your chores. I mean, just old school. I don't know how else, how else to put it. I was only teasing about the age. Thing. That's all right. All right. <laughs> I'm teasing. getting rebuilt. I know. I go, so don't See, worry. I know he can't hit me with his dominant arm right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is there any questions out there right now? Do we have any calls? Does anybody want to call in? Because we're doing a call-in show tonight. We have a question. Milton. Milton. Milton, come up here, Magic. We got a question. You got to hold it back to your mouth. Hey, Steven. Not too hard now, because I'm old. That'd be nice. <laughs> Iron Man? Yeah. That is something that our commissioner would love to bring back. I can't say yes or no, but that's that's one thing that Chris has been pushing for, so I'll just kind of leave it at that right now. Okay. And the same thing with the Nets? The Nets, we haven't really talked about the Nets on that, but I have heard the Iron Man, though, in the general conversation. What is your favorite memory from one of your Predators games? There's not a, I just can't pick out one favorite memory. What about championships? Well, yeah, you always feel good when you win. <laughs> That's always a good thing. But no, I mean, we had so many good memories and so much good times. And just be able to go to one of them games with my family, that's probably the best memory I got out of all of it. I was able to spend time with my wife and kids. So, that's that's what it's about. Thanks, Nate. That was easy. Yeah, it wasn't too painful. <laughs> Thanks, Magic. Magic, what's that name? What do you got there? What number? 13 jersey tonight? And who is that? Lamar Brown. Lamar Brown. All right, representing old school. Everybody can see it on, on uh, screen right now. Call that number right there, 407 595 1179. If you have any questions for Mr. Nate Starling, or if you call, got any questions for me? What is he saying? Do we have a monster in the house? Uh, yeah, <laughs> as a matter of fact, we do. I don't know. Is he wearing a mullet? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the name. Outside of sports, outside of football, arena football, what do you like to do? Do you have any hobbies? Honestly, don't have time for hobbies. <laughs> I know you have hobbies, Nate. Nate has got, he likes to say toys. How many motorcycles you got, Nate? Anyway, the quality, the, what I enjoy is like our Sunday dinners. I mean, we used to every Sunday until everything got really crazy with all this pandemic stuff. Every Sunday we would have dinner with the family, no matter what. Wife, wife would set everything up, all the kids would come over, and that's that's what it's about. So that's, that's what I enjoy. Yeah, of course. I mean, we got Mary Beth. Oh, we got. Mary Beth Scott. I'm here. Oh, I'm a boy, my Go ahead and talk, Mary Beth. I'm sorry, I put you on speaker phone now. Thank 
soliciting, soliciting, you know, trying to um, sell, sell, sell her season tickets. That's awesome, though. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you did. Listen, anybody at home, if you have any any questions for uh, for uh, Nate Starling here, give us a call at 407-595-1179, and we'll get you on the air. And somebody else is calling in, too. It's somebody with a 407 number, too. Mary Lil Bianca will pick it up in just a second. Um, I got a question for you. Shoot. To date, what professional achievement are you most proud of? Everybody says they're wiping kids, but that's not a professional achievement. What's your most, what's your, to date, your most professional achievement? I would have to say my business. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed. Starling and Son. Yeah, Starling and Son. You've know. been there for how long now? Right around 20 years, maybe yeah. a little better. I actually have to ask my painter. <laughs> yeah, all right. He's probably calling in tonight. What do we got here? Is this Kenny? Kenny's calling in. Hold on a second. Kenny, you're live and on the air. Hi. How you doing, sir? Well, Kenny, first off, before he answers that, they're not cheerleaders, they are dance team members. They are the Orlando Predator Prowlers. They're not cheerleaders. That's quite all right. But, I mean, they can probably answer this question for you. That one was probably the best for the commissioner. I know, I right? Once we hit 10 teams, I believe that we might be able to get a TV deal. So you hear that, you hear that Kenny? All right. He said he believes that's the best, better question is for the commissioner. But uh, rumor has it once we reach 10 teams, then possibly a television deal. Yeah, I could be totally wrong on that one. We could be wrong. We just don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, that was back on ESPN as well, right? <laughs> what do you say? Hey, Kenny, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. All right, thanks. All right. Now, if you guys didn't hear the question, Kenny asked about, are we going to be getting, with all the expenses, are we going to be getting any TV time going on? Answer to that was probably best for the commissioner. You want to bring the commissioner back over and ask him that question? I love getting him up here after he's had it. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Mr. Commissioner. Mr. Commissioner. Do you have a second, young man? Sure. We just had a caller call in, and Mr. Starling is deflecting that question to you. He said, that question is best for the commissioner. The gentleman says, with the expansions that we're getting this season, all the expansions, are we going to be seeing any TV time so he can see the lovely dance team members on television? Well, that's a great question. Of course, all of our games are always streamed live on YouTube. And there are multiple teams that are working on their local TV deals. So the more teams you get and the more national presence you get, then the more opportunity to get on TV. You know, at the end of the day, I think one of the things we've been concentrating on with the announcement of the fantasy football and uh, there's some other interesting things going on that we haven't finalized yet. The goal is to get more eyes watching the game, whether it's streaming or on TV. You know, we feel like our play moving forward is, uh, you know, just how many different ways can you watch a game? And online watching, whether it's YouTube TV or getting on some of these internet streaming type services, gives us an avenue to get more eyes on the game. And at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for. Great answer. Good answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you answered the form. Oh, look at that. Your lovely wife brought a stool up like you're going to be part of the show. You can be more than welcome to come on up there. Oh, you're more and more than welcome to come on up and join us. Get the bigger footprint that we get. 
throughout the NAO, I think the better shot that we have getting, you know, televised. So it's all about the footprint. It's all about the footprint. It's all about growing. It's all about fan participation. Because honestly, we could have 50 damn teams out there. If we don't have fans in the seats, what good is it going to do? You know what I mean? And I, I don't, I'm, it's just the harsh truth. It's just the harsh truth. Um, now, we were talking about, before we got the call, talking about your business, Starling and Sons. Now, I know for a fact you are so busy over there. And you're over there on the tap behind it, advertising. Word of mouth is your advertising. Orlando Predators can't really go on the word of mouth to advertise and pay the bills. We need you, the small business owner, the big business owner. Give us a call. Get in contact with me. The number on the screen right there is my cell number. I will send you sponsorship packages. They will get your name out there at the Amway Center right there on the field of play. You get thousands of people seeing it all the time. It gets shared and shared and shared on YouTube, Facebook. If, if we do get a TV deal going on, there you go. So give me a call before, you know, things really, really, really get in later into the season. Because if we do get a TV deal, now's the time to get your sponsorships. Because price is right. Not only on the Predator page though, right now, i got to give a huge shout out to Cycle, Cycle TV. I mean, these guys do a jam old job. Um, the hits and stuff that they get, and all the shares, I mean, all our sponsors are out there nonstop. Without a doubt. Cycle Fever TV right now is helping us out, and they're live streaming our show tonight. Um, it's amazing, as you can see. Cycle Fever TV right there. The lights, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for these guys here, making this like a professional thing. I'd be shooting in front of my van room back at the Redneck Riviera Resort and Casino. Let me tell you, um, we've come a long way. I want to thank Fish on Fire for being a sponsor for the 2020, 2021 season. Give it up for Fish on Fire. Uh, make sure you take care of your, your bartenders and your service. Heather behind the bar. Take care of Heather behind the bar. Morgan out here on the floor taking care of everybody. Take care of them because they take care of you. And Morgan, if I could get a minute. Nate, how would you describe your work ethic? You knew the question was coming because you've been staring at it for five minutes. I didn't have my glasses. I can't read that cue card over there. I would hope to say I have a pretty strong work ethic. You know, I got that from my father growing up. So, and that's one thing I can say. Well, even my boys, they have a real strong work ethic. So, it's in the bloodline. I mean, I know this. I know this. But <laughs> this is so that people can get to, you know. And look, we got we got the breadheads in the house tonight. I wish I could flip my screen and show you, but then Mike would probably be in my way again. Um, sorry, Mike. I had to do that. We'll get them up here. And we'll get them up here in a little bit. Um, they tell us something about you that maybe people wouldn't know. You couldn't ask me this stuff earlier, so I could have been prepared. <laughs> I tried to get this here to you. Something about you that nobody would really. I mean, they would look at you and they know you. They know you because Starling and Sons. They know you because the Predators. But what's something that? about you that people just really wouldn't figure out. They go, oh, really? They probably wouldn't, I guess they wouldn't know that I was actually an ordained minister. I love to do hospital visits. There you um, go. Weddings, all that good stuff. You always hate funerals. Um, but uh, that's, one, that's one of my passions is, is with everything that I've been through in life, you know, God puts you through it for a reason. So that's where I, I've directed a lot of my focus on it also. I don't talk about it that much. It's just something that you just do. So if you didn't hear, Nate is an ordained minister. Performs weddings, funerals, uh, 
any, I mean, my gosh, there's so many different things that you can do being an ordained minister. Uh, I know, I know, I, I went to, actually, I went to, a, you married your son last year, didn't you? Now, wait a minute, let me just rephrase that. He didn't marry his son. His son married a beautiful young lady named Jamie, who, if you guys remember, last season, Nate the third proposed to Jamie on the field at halftime at one of the games. And my wife and I, we were lucky enough to be invited to the wedding. Thank you very much. Uh, it was awesome, and Nate did a fabulous job doing it. And uh, Bill was the photographer. You, you were. <laughs> Now here's something that you can talk about and it's not gonna shock you on there. Are there any charities or organizations that are close to your heart? Make-A-Wish Foundation, uh, St. Jude, um, any, any of them, you know, anything to do with children. Okay. It's really dear to my heart. So the kids? Yeah. The kids are close to your heart. I knew this. I know these questions before he even answers. So that's how that's how that's how that's how much I, I love you. You're 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 just you're 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 my brother. Nate, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Now comes some some crazy questions. A superpower. I want to fly. That's like a superpower, but uh, you know. What about a spirit animal? Spirit animal. I would have to probably uh, go with a uh, jaguar. A jaguar? Why a jaguar? I'm always on the run. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you're a hard man to... Uh, you're definitely a hard man to track down. That's a fact. If you could have... Now, now we get into some, some deep, thought, deep thought questions. If you could have dinner or drinks with three people, past or present, who would it be? And why? Castaldo. I'm sorry? Ben Castaldo. Ben Castaldo. Yeah, which is a real dear, real dear to my heart. I mean, he's been there through me through rough times, through thick and thin. Um, he'd be one of them. Um, you know, you always, always would like to sit down with the Lord, you know, and see what's going on. And then, uh, You're my best friend. Thank you, dear. And as far as the third one, I don't know, uh, honestly, maybe my grandparents, my grandfather, get to know them a little bit better. They passed at an early age, so. I had a, I had a, Brandon Fuentes. He is one of our defensive backs. He was the very first person that we had here on Bread Talk over at the house there. And he threw that question at me. And it, you know, it's a hard question to answer. It is. It really is, because it, it makes you think about it. It's like, mm. So I thought about it too, you know, and it's like, who would it be? Who would it be? And then I was actually, uh, Milton has a podcast that he does called Strapped to the Bumper of Life. And he threw that question at me. And I'm going like, you would have to ask me, right? What were they, what did you say? I, I, I mean, off the cuff, that made me think about it, think about it. So I said, you know what? I lost my father a few years back, so I think I'd like to have dinner with my father. And both of my grandfathers passed before I even turned nine years old. So I said, those guys. So to sit down with the family, and, you know, dad once again, and just the grandparents, you know. And then I go, like, can I have a board? Because. I've been married for 20 years now, and I never got to meet my father-in-law. And I've been told by so many people who have another color. I have, we, uh, I've had so many people tell me he would have loved you, he would have loved you. So it's like, I think I'd like to have dinner with him too. You know, probably drinks because he's career native. Yeah, I was always probably. blessed to get to know my in-laws very well. So that's one thing. I'm really blessed. Don't get me wrong, my mother-in-law, I love 
water. It was like it was, it was, it was, it was, no, it was. I, I couldn't do no wrong with my mother. Yeah, so I, no. I, you know, but my wife and I met and we moved in five days after we met. And I proposed like two weeks later, 20 years ago. So that's how, that's how crazy they thought we were. Hey, when it's right, it's right. Yeah, we know it was right. Do we have another caller? Is my, uh, is my, oh my god, is my car maintenance due again? My car warranty is up again. Nate, growing up, who did you look up to as a role model? My father. Your father? Because of his work ethic. Yeah, me too. I mean, really, as far as, I think a lot of young men do. I mean, you know, unless, you know, unless you're watching, what is it, 13, 13 Ways? What is that we're watching? Mary Lou? What are we watching? 13 what? 13 Ways? Yeah, 13 Reasons Why. And then this one guy on there is, his father's, you know, he's not a role model. That's another crazy thing, and that's another David question. David Hasselhoff. Yeah, <laughs> you, your role model was David Hasselhoff. No, 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 no. Running, running down the beach. Okay. You know, that's not a bad one. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Nate, what were you like in high school? Because you're kind of quiet. You're, you're very quiet. Pretty well laid back until you started picking on younger children's kids and stuff, and then you saw a different side of me. Yeah. So that's yeah, the same way my boys are, you know. So that's one thing I'm blessed about. Oh, come on now, your boys fight with the brothers fight all the time. Don't give me that. They're laid back. Oh, I'm not saying they don't fight. <laughs> I'm just saying you don't dare pick on your friends. You yeah. Know? Okay. I got gotcha. you. They got your back. They got your back. They got your back. We'll take that. Look, they still got my name on there. I'm, they're gonna call me at midnight tonight. Now I know that. So. Knowing what you know now, all right, what advice would you give a 10-year-old Nate Star? Probably go into business for yourself a lot earlier than I did. <laughs> you know, I would have started this when I was younger instead of, you know. <laughs> Start your own business younger. Yes. <laughs> um, what did you do before you had started your business? I actually worked for Volvo Corporation for many years, so um, did that. And then when I was up north, besides working on the farm, I also worked for the city. So that, and then I ended up getting injured up there. Came down here to visit my parents. And fell in love with Florida. And here I am. So your parents moved to Florida before you came here. Yeah. So your parents brought you down. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. How long were they in here in Florida? Probably about six, seven years before I came down. Awesome. Um, got Justin in the house. Jason Lucas, I'm sorry, Jason. Justin, your nickname is Jason. Just to recognize the people that are in the house tonight. Uh, once again, Psycho Fever TV is here. Mike, IT John, Brittany is in the house. We've got Dickie Owens, we've got Steve Morris and Nancy Morris. Thanks guys for coming. We got our bread heads back there. We've got Tom and Nick and Milton. It's kind of hard to see back in there. Of course, Mary Lou Bianco's here. But I got my 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 great friends. James and Dottie Sapp are in the house right there. That's my golfing buddy right there, I'll tell you about. That's my golfing buddy. We got Ron Ternico over there. We got Ron Ternico over there. Where's he at? Yeah. Right there. Oh, right there. Yeah. And of course, Chris Siegfried and the in the house. Yeah! Nice play! Just letting people know you're here. Like the shirt. We have to get the shirt. Did you go golfing today, Chris? No. No? Oh, another off-season surgery. That's how we roll. <laughs> Dang, man. Day after his. What was it? I think after. Day after his. Oh. See, I couldn't see because I got blinded by the light, and Allie is 
Allie and Kathy, and the kids are here, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Um, great crowd here at Fish on Fire. Again, thank you, Fish on Fire, for the sponsorship, letting us come up here and hosting us for Bread Talk. We're having a great time. Back to date, Starla. Any questions? I don't see no questions coming up there. I know. I don't know why. We have no comments on there. What is the maybe? It's, I know why, because they're looking at... They must be... Uh, Mary Beth, is there somebody on your line watching that will have the questions up? Because I've got zero questions. That's okay. I'm going to refresh this here, and I'm going to go on here and look. But, Nate Starling, what is the scariest thing you have ever done besides getting married or being owner of the Predators? <laughs> Scariest thing. One of my weaknesses is height. I, mean, I gotta say, probably the arena. When it went all the way up to the roof, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty chilling. Up to the roof, up to the rafters. Were they? Right were they up in the rafters? Yeah. Okay. Now we got some comments on there. Let's see what we got here. Click in there. We'll have it right here. Oh yeah, now we got some. Look at all these here. Now I'm starting to feel loved. <laughs> now you're starting to feel loved. I'm there you go. Worried here. No, no, no. We had up to actually viewing at one time. We had over 30. They come in and out. They come in and out. We're good. Um, so you know what? While I'm looking at this right here, why don't you tell us a little bit about the upcoming season and what the fans are going to expect? Like bringing back the Predators of old. We're trying to bring back all the old school. I mean, it's all about the fan experience, so that's what we want to bring it back to. Um, we got a bunch of new teams coming on, so we're going to have a full schedule going on this year. The, um, our main goal is to be able to give back to the community and do charitable work throughout the community this year, especially with everybody right now that's been suffering during this COVID and everything else. That's what we want to be able to do. But our fan experience, we want to bring that back to the old, the old bread days. All right, just flashing back here. Beth Constantini, Laura, Laura's mom, said hi, Nate. Hello. Um, now, Tom Traver, our, one of our, one of our, our longtime bread heads, our longtime fans, um, he had a question. Uh, no, 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 where I lost it. I lost it, but I can tell you what it is. What Predator logo are we going to be using this season for the 2021? We are going to be using the one with the yellow eye in it. So is it the red with the yellow eye? Yes, sir. You heard it here, folks. Old school, back. Red with the, with the eye in it. Um, Nate or uh, Magic has that one. Indoor War is here. Uh, uh, Stanton. Stanton, sorry, I always pronounce it wrong, too. What logo there it was. Uh, Ronnie Hardison, welcome, brother. I, How he's you doing? Coming, he's coming by next weekend. Uh, Mary Beth, my, my four-year-old grandson, loves your logo, Nate. For Starling and Sons, I'm sure. Um, Brittany says... Thank you, Brittany. She, she, said, she, she, said, she, she said she's going to kill you or something. Or, right now, she said you're killing it. Um, Fans at home, you can call in, ask your questions. Of course, call 407-595-1179. Ask Mr. Nate Starling or myself any questions that you may have. Um, so, da -da -da, you did so much, especially for friends yeah, of Mary Beth, Yeah, Mary Beth hooked me up with our organization last year, Friends of Jack Jackman, which I am blessed to be able to do stuff with, with these kids. So, a huge shout out to Mary Beth. I mean, she does so much more behind the scenes than just sell tickets. I tell you what, if you want the good customer experience, I mean, get a hold of Mary Beth. Oh, without a doubt. That's why That's why I am always throwing Mary Beth's number every single show on here. That and her number is? I throw her number out there. IT John, if you could throw Mary Beth's number up on there for season tickets, that would be great. Um, I mean, I have it right here. I could read it off. Mary Beth's 
number is 386-624-3731. That's 386-624-3731. Don't get excited. Drop my cards. That's okay. Um, of course, <laughs> Brittany says, the favorite fans are here. Yes, as far as Psycho Fever TV goes, Brittany, you're my favorite. You're my favorite. My favorites. I don't have just one. You're right, I have three. You guys are always here. The wing eating contest, how do we do it? Are we gonna do it? I'm sure there's gonna be plenty. IT, we need to bring IT up here because he's never, they never let him on over there at Second Fever TV. <laughs> so there's very best number that's on the screen right now, 386-624-3731. If you haven't got your season tickets now, get your season tickets because right now, you're getting them at the 2020 price. When the 2021 season comes along, you're gonna get more games. You wait past the end, the uh, beginning of September, maybe the end of September. We're not sure yet when the cutoff is. Prices are gonna go up because to play at the Amway Center costs more than a nickel or a dime, okay? So the prices of the, of the season tickets are gonna go up. So get them now at the 2020 prices. You can get all of our home games. It's gonna be seven home games at least, correct? At least. Seven home games at least for $98. You can't beat it. I mean, that's at the Amway Center in beautiful downtown Orlando. All over those seats from row eight and up, $98. Starting at $98. I mean, there's not a bad seat in the house. If you've ever been to an Orlando Predator game, or if you've been to a, a, a Solar Bear game, a Magic game, whatever, you know you sat in the lower bowl. You know there's not a bad seat in the house. The lower you go, the more money it is, but you're that much closer to the action. To say. And that football right there, I caught that last season during a game. That's a game day football that I caught. I was in the stands because I paid for season tickets as well. I give my season tickets away because I want people to come and enjoy the Orlando Predators and Arena Football. It's just, I mean, it's, it's an experience. See, you get me going, I'll just talk. Uh, female go or the Mary we are still we asking are, about female we are, gear. We are actually working on a ton of female gear. A bunch of bling bling, all that good stuff. So you heard that, Mary Beth. Trust me, I'm married, Mary Beth. I know how the bling bling goes. <laughs> <laughs> the shop is uh, local, you know. <laughs> Alan Paul Duckworth is, is watching right now, Alan. Welcome, brother. Alan, um, love you, brother. We're gonna have you back on too. We're gonna have you. We're gonna have to have you up here in full garb when we get closer to the season. Um, Who could ask for a better mascot? Seriously. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's, I, we got the best mascot for the league, hands down. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Now I don't know if if you caught the show last week. We did it at a remote location. You know, due to the coronavirus and and you know, I mean, for the girls for their health and everything, I completely understand. Laura's got a one-year-old baby. I mean, you know. Safety first. Safety first, without a doubt. Safety first. And um, I said to them, and uh, I'll back it up and say it again, they got robbed last year, our dance team, by not winning the best dance team in the NAL. It was, they, they just, they robbed us, you know. That's one thing I got to say about Laura. She's a professionist. Um, I love her to death. The girls, I love them. I tell you what, the personality. And I always said you can have the best looking girl out there on the field, but if they don't have a personality, they're not worth it. And one thing I can say is every one of our dancers have a personality. Oh, without a doubt. It's outstanding. Without so hands doubt. down, I give a major shout out to Laura and the oh, job yeah. that she does. And Kenny. And her husband, Kenny Hearn. He's, he's awesome. Yes, he does. Keeps him in shape. He's awesome. Um, it was funny because I asked the girls. I asked the girls last week. Laura got up and had to go do something real quick. 
And I said, girl, so how difficult is it working? <laughs> I kind of like threw him under the bus. <laughs> how hard is it working with the coach? Got another question here. Uh, huge heart, very honest. Uh, Tammy Denise is watching. Hi, Tammy. Hello. Call in, 407-595-1179. Ask Nate Starling any questions you want. Nick Green is there. Nick goes, uh, which logo? All right, we already answered that, Nick. Yeah. We're going to go with the What logo for the 2021 season? The red P with the I in it, okay? That question has been answered five times now, so we should have it out there. Um, I asked you the scariest thing, right? Oh, tell us what you did. Did you say that we're going to be uh, having people repelling from the ceilings again? We are matter working fact, on it. Matter of fact, Alan has hooked us up with a bunch of uh, pyrotechnic uh, people to do all that. Like I said, we want to go back old school press. We want fireworks in house. We want people jumping out of the ceiling. I mean, we want the party. We got Cycle Fever TV that's coming in with the motorcycles in the game. Bringing the girls in on the bikes Bringing again. Bringing the girls in on the bike. I mean, that's one of the proud favorites, hands down. Without a doubt, um, yeah. And then you can throw a bunch of smoke and fireworks and everything else in there. And then our awesome dancers. It's a big party. And um, I know you saw the show last week, but um, they have, they're bringing the jungle back. Did you see the outfits the girls were wearing? Yes. With the leopard print, this, oh man, I'll tell you what. Laura's done a lot of fabrication and a lot Great of job. Time. She does a really good job. She's, like spent, said, she's spent a lot of your money, Nate. <laughs> I have two just, wives. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you ask some people, I got three wives. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Um, she's the one that threw me under the bus today, right? Four? Yeah, no, 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 no. The other one. Oh, the yeah. Third one. She chucked you. Yeah, yeah, she chucked me under the bus, Dan. Because Nate. I want to thank you now. I want to thank you for coming in because I know you're not really feeling well because of the sur surgery and everything on your shoulder. Still a little bit under the weather. A little under the weather. Um, not Corona. Don't worry about that. It's from surgery. Um, she threw me under the bus. She said a real VR person would have a backup plan. <laughs> she goes, "You didn't really tell him that." I'm like, "Yeah, I did. I told him point blank." Yeah, we don't. No secrets. No secrets. No secrets. So. Do you have a favorite fan experience? You as a fan with the Predators. Do you have a favorite moment? Favorite moment for me is being able to give back to them kids. That's one of my favorite moments. What about you as a fan before you became an owner? Like during a game, meeting a player, this and that. That's always that's always something. Yeah, I know. Every single football, game is fun. You know, yeah. getting autographs from you know top notch guys. Oh, it's just. I know, right? I, I I've been I've been I think we discussed it and in, in the years go back and forth. But I think I've been a season season ticket holder since '03. Mary and I, '02 or '03. I still get goosebumps at a knot in my throat and welcome to the jungle comes and the, and the lights dim and the fireworks go and claw comes running out. I get choked up because I just... That, that, is, that is one moment when everything's fitting to go down. It's, it's about to happen. It's getting real. It's, yeah, it's, it's getting real. Um, favorite theme park? You better say what I'm thinking. Favorite theme park? <laughs> yeah, that's a circus. <laughs> um, I didn't say that, did I? I would, I would have to say I probably love Epcot. Okay. Hands down, love Epcot. Epcot? Epcot. Epcot. I thought you were going to say SeaWorld. But that's just me. I love SeaWorld. Um, Still waiting on it, but what's the favorite place you've ever traveled? Niagara Falls. Before you answer that there, you see on the screen right here, hurricane relief from Puerto Rico. All right, this last hurricane did not affect us in Orlando, Central Florida area, or no problem, hardly at all. But the people in Puerto Rico, which is part of the United States, did get hit. 
and they need your help. So if you look at that uh, flyer on the screen right there, if you can do anything, doesn't matter what it is, please help the people in Puerto Rico because last last year when the hurricane went through there, they've been beat up. They've been beat up the past couple of years by these hurricanes. All right, so if you can, please do what you can. All right. Favorite place you travel. And thank you for putting that up there because a lot of stuff like this goes unnoticed. So, I mean, thank you guys. That, that's one of the things that we got to say about Cycle Fever. They're on top of all the stuff and giving back. So, thank you guys. Don't take the credit. I'm going to give it to Mike. Mike's the one who threw it at me today. <laughs> Brittany gave it to Mike. Mike gave it to IT John. It's all in the Cycle Fever family. Exactly. <laughs> and a shout out to Hank. Oh, uh, Ranger, Ranger Hank. Ranger Hank up in, 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 Ranger in Hank. Uh, Georgia. Up Blue Ridge. Still Georgia, right? Still, yeah, he's a Ranger up there. Oh, is, he, is that what he told you? <laughs> you see how they treat me. If they made a movie about you, who would play you? It's not a hard question. Who would you say? I'd say Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Hell yeah, Paul Newman would play Nate Starling in the, the life I've of I've always heard like Woody Harrison. Who? Woody Harrison. No, no, no. No, no, you're, you're, no, you're, you, you got a, Paul Newman would play you. I'm lucky Carl hasn't called in, so. <laughs> hey, Carl, if you're listening, give us a call, 407-595-1179. We'd love to hear from you. He said he was going to call. Um, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm surprised I haven't gotten a call from my, uh, from Grant Gore up in Virginia. He's always texting in. I'm surprised. Maybe if you get better guests, maybe. You think, you think that would be an honor? Yeah. Man, I've had the owner of the Predators and a, and a special guest appearance by the commissioner. I mean, hey, this is, this is not a bad show. We've got 15 people watching right now. We've already been on for just over an hour. Normally, they, they cut me off at like 7 or at uh, 620. <clears throat> 605. <laughs> If you had the ability to travel in time, where's the first place you'd go? You can go back, you can go forward. Where would you go? I would probably go back to my younger years and like I said, probably start my business a lot earlier and probably change a lot of things that I've done in my life, right some wrongs, whatever. You know, so not that there's a lot of them out there, but you know, everybody has them. Sure. Um, that's probably what I would do. As far as my family, just be able to spend more time with my boys than I did. Kind of the workaholic, the old school that kind of fell wayside. I was always working and then before you know it, they're growing up and out the door. So that's probably one of my biggest regrets in life. I mean I can I can see that, but I know your I know your sons, and I think you instilled that work ethic that you have into them. So I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing because you're still you're very close with your boys. So uh, you know I agree to disagree. <laughs> that's just my opinion. And well, when you get to be older like me, you, know, when you, <laughs> you look back in the days and you're like, you know what, if I could, you know? Yeah, so. I hear you. Um, dumb questions now. So. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, dumb questions now. Dumb answers. Yeah, eh, no worries. Um, you can't get some of the dumb answers that I've had. Or, sorry, not dumb answers. Some of the silly answers that I've had on some of these. If you were stuck on a deserted island, what three things would you have to have? That I would have to have? Yes. Uh, definitely chocolate. Chocolate? Okay. Um, definitely the person I love by my side. The person that I love by my side. All right, I'll be there. Down. I'll be there. Um, three, three things. <laughs> Not a big bear drinker. <laughs> 
Pure water. Pure water. <laughs> okay. Chocolate. Pure water. Me and water. Okay. I know you meant bar. Uh, <laughs> all right. Good answers. I had some people say cell phone. I'm like, it's gonna die. You're not gonna have cell phone reception. You're on a deserted island. You're like, why do you want a cell phone? You just blew one of your wishes. And then somebody said, my wife and two kids. And they're like, who's gonna get you off? You're stuck on this island now. But that's okay. I like your answers. Uh, I still don't know what I want. I still don't know what I want. If you could wake up tomorrow with a new ability, what would it be? A new ability. Have, have my body be able to work back at 100%. <laughs> For instance, I'll tell you mine. I'll tell you mine. My new ability would be able to play piano fluently. Play anything. So I could walk up to any piano and just be a, 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 a master at it. That would be my new ability. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, you and Ronnie Harrison. Get back to me on that one. Get back to me. <laughs> What kind of motorcycles they make? They have anything? What, what do they make? Those of you at home might not have heard that. IT John says, what kind of motorcycle do you ride? And of course you heard Nate. What kind of motorcycles they make? <laughs> got an ultra classic. And then also a street glide. Just got my hands on. Just... I haven't had been able to ride the street glide yet. <laughs> Just had all the air suspension put on it, and then, like I said, I've been without an arm for now, for a while. So. I'm trying to get you out of the damn boring place. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, come up here and sit down. Come. <laughs> Behind the scenes. I got warts. All right, all right. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue? Because that was a good color to pick for that unit. <laughs> He's had the Predator shot. Yeah, yeah, the Predator. What's your favorite drink? My favorite drink? Predator, uh, Crown Apple. Crown Apple. Well, yeah, it's the it. Predator shot comes in a close first. It's right in there, right in there. Actually, if you actually if you text him that picture real quick, you can actually he'll put it up on the screen. I'll bet you. Yeah, he work. We are having. <laughs> it bring your uh, uh, give him your right down your number. You can do it. You're it John. I'm always yelling at the wife for being on the phone when you're in the middle of something. Here I'm up here being interviewed on my phone. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we got plenty of time until he's it's, it's seven twelve. We got as much time as we want. We got as much time as we want here. Let's send it to me. Or give it to me, I'll send it here. I'll send it to you. Hey, Kelly! No, <laughs> I'm sorry. You got another question? Sure. Um, surf or turf? <laughs> turf. Turf. Oh yeah, you a lobster guy or seafood or oh turf? Turf. Turf. I stay. No more sorry. bread shots from this guy. Sorry. Uh, most everybody goes surf. <laughs> I was thinking surf. Dogs or cats? And I know that answer. Just put your number on the top. <laughs> A winery or a brewery? Winery. Winery. Oh, you're a you're a classy dude. I'm a brewery. I'm a hangout kind of thing. He's fancy. He's fancy. He's fancy. Is he sweet or salty? Sweet. Sweet. Boneless or traditional? Boneless. Boneless? Man. Man. You know all the respect that I said I had for him earlier. <laughs> I know. Barb has his man card. 
Well, it's, it's easier to eat when you only got one hand. <laughs> oh, oh, we're just doing the one hand thing. So, listen, Nate. While while we've had this quarantine thing, I know you've been you've been still working through all this um, because you're essential. Um, have you been binge? Like essential. Have you been binge watching anything on TV? No. No. I've been working. You've been watching. <laughs> You've been watching all the reruns of Vegas. That's on no. the weekend, once in a while. I've uh, sat there watching yeah, Vegas. That's something back in the old days. I know, right? I mean, I was talking the other night, and he was telling me something about the show, and I go, Vegas? He yep. says, yeah. I was actually on there. Bon Jovi was on there. And I'm like, and then, uh, who else was there? One of the, I can't think of the other player that was on there, but they were playing jokes on each other back and forth. Was it John Elway? No. It might have been Elway. I remember you, you tell me about it. Yeah, Elway and Bon Jovi. <laughs> You're exactly right, Steve. <laughs> he was out there modeling the uniforms and stuff. <laughs> it's fixing to come up here on the screen in just a second here. Um, the Predator vehicle that's getting wrapped right now. I'm sorry? Did you name it? Did you name this vehicle? Number one. <laughs> there it is, right there. You see this vehicle driving around, make sure you honk your horn and wave. All right? That is one of the Orlando Predators vehicles that uh, is going to be driving around town. Elite Signing Graphics, who was one of our sponsors last year, is actually doing that right there. Elite so, Signing Graphics. We are actually looking at trying to get a couple of transits, one for an equipment vehicle from Mr. Tom. So he's got him a nice vehicle to ride, and then we also get another one for our players to be transported wherever they need to go. So awesome. we, are, we are working on that stuff this year, hot and heavy. We need to talk to you about, uh, maybe think about you know, the guy that does your promotions and everything, about uh, wrapping his vehicle or something like that. Because you know, he's all over town. Just, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Nate, this next, this next question is my favorite question. And I ask everybody, and I get so many different answers this and that. If you could pick one song to play every time that you walked into a room, to, to find you, what, what would that song be? Nothing by Bon Jovi. Nothing by Bon Jovi. Uh, well, maybe halfway there, maybe. You know? <laughs> 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 it would go with the Bon Jovi song, Halfway There. <laughs> <laughs> living on a prayer, there you go. Uh. Anything by me. Oh, meatloaf, yeah. Bad out of hell. There you go. No. There you go. If you need some help, I'll tell you, Matt Wells, because I know Matt's probably watching tonight, too. Um, he's, he's good, humble people. He really is. Matt. I, yeah. I, I, a lot of his posts and stuff, and he is really good people. He's very talented musically. Oh, without a doubt. Hands down. You know what his song was? No. By Michael Jackson. You want me to tell you what the, the commissioner's song was? Tiptoe through the tulips with Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim, Tiptoe <laughs> through the tulips. No, that wasn't it. No, he. Uh, Mr. Big Stuff. No, <laughs> no. He, I'm running out. I'm running out of stuff. He here. skated out. He said, "Welcome to the jungle." Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true man. There you go. Oh, girls, girls, girls. Who said that? Oh, Bill? Yeah. Imagine that. Again, I want to throw this out there for season tickets. Call Mary Beth Scott at 386-624-3731. That's 386-624-3731. Get your season tickets for the 2021 season. Pay the 2020 prices. You get more games for less money. $98 gets you a whole season of arena football at the Amway Center all over the Give her a call. 
Call the number on the screen, 407-595-1179. Uh, we'll be wrapping this up pretty soon here with the owner of the Orlando Predators, Mr. Nate Starling. Well, once so some you guys of this, have any questions? Once some of this COVID stuff comes up, we're going to start wanting to be doing a lot of block parties, red block parties and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's hot on our list right now. So, but we got to work with the social distancing and all that good stuff. So once all that gets released a little bit and ease up on us, then you'll be able to start seeing us out there and a lot more. And, and speaking of, speaking of, what was your question, Dickie? A Predator Cruise. Predator Cruise. That was brought up, I believe, well, two weeks ago. Was brought up, I believe, for a Predator Cruise. We got a question here from Tom Trey, one of our Predators. Tom, here, has Is there any uh, plans for billboards around As soon as our season, as soon as we start getting ready to advertise, get more bang for our buck, yes. <laughs> Now, it wasn't really brought up tonight or the past couple of weeks, but just so everybody knows what, what we're trying to do for the 2021 season is bring back a lot of the Predators of the Old. All right? Bringing that fun back to the Amway Center, back to the Orlando Predators. So what does that mean for you guys? That means Church Street closes. If we got a game at 7 o'clock, Church Street closes, I think, at 3. We can start setting up all the fun stuff. We have different vendors coming in from 4 o'clock. The doors open at 6. So from 4 to 6, it's a party on Church Street. It's bringing back, bringing back the fun Predators of old. And then when you get inside, a football game. Out. It's all about the fan experience and then just spanking Tampa and sending them home crying. Oh, you heard that right? Exactly. I'm going to throw it out there right it's, now. It's, we already started our trash talk the other day. So, so the trash talk has already started for, trash for talk is already the war on <laughs> Yes, it is. It may not be the Tampa Bay storm, but it's the Tampa Bay tornadoes we're going to uh, be working on exactly. at home. They were talking about tornadoes, and you know what? We're used to hurricanes here, baby. There you so go. you just go ahead and keep your little tornado there at the house. So whenever we play Tampa, this is just a shout out for all you Predator fans. Before you come to the game, pick up a box of tissues so you can hand it to a Tampa Bay fan for their ride home so they can wipe the tears on their eyes. All right? We're not going to go there. Pick up a box of Kleenex and so they can just wipe those tears from their eyes. There is so many different teams that I want to see us just wreak revenge on. Because there are some games last season that should have never happened. I have never seen uh, a shutout in arena football and it happened to us twice. If Ben Bennett was here tonight, he would tell you it's not going to happen again. He'll be out there on the midfield in his boxers. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> Sing it right in here. And you heard it live. I don't want to see that. But I want to see Jacksonville go down, Tampa go down, the Cobras go down. I want to see the West Virginia Rough Riders go down because you don't see it, but they are the defending champion from the league that they just left to come to the NAL. I want to see them go down. Jersey Flight is an, oh, there's an Amber Alert going on. The Jersey Flight, I want to see them go. I want to see everybody go down. Because you know what I want? I want to go like Dickie Owen said, a Predator Cruz, so that you and Ron can hand out the championship rings on a Predator Cruise. And all the Predator fans can go on this cruise for a price. Because the rings are going to cost some money. Um, give us that problem. But yeah, give that, us that problem. Give us that problem. Exactly. But the thing is, for these guys to really do this. Steve Morris talks and everybody hushes. I, 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 E.F. Hutton, e. Hutton over here. What was that, Steve? Steve Morris. 
Steve Morris in the house. <laughs> The players need the fans, so it's up to you guys. You guys got to get involved as well. When you come to the game, bring back that screen. Bring back those signs. I'm sure we're going to be doing all that stuff too so that we can get it out there, so that we can bring the Predators of old back to the Amway Center, back to Orlando, back to you, the fan. It's all about fan experience, and at the end of the day, win or lose, hopefully win. But we're still one big family. We're all the NAO family. So we're in this together. We're in this to make it grow. And we're just one big family. I gotta tell you, like you say, win or lose, but prefer we win. Last season was a lot of W's and, 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 and win golf. But you couldn't tell, by the way, the players interacting with the fans after the game. How many players you got to go out there on the field and do duck duck goose with the kids? I mean, we were blessed with some awesome players last year that just you know, gave their hearts on the field. So, absolutely. I think we have another question. No, 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 no. Uh, to me, uh, this is a question that was uh, somebody told me to ask you, but they said, uh, "Would the Orlando Predators win more than two games in 2021?" Yes. Is that a guarantee? Ron put that guarantee out there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we gotta have a guarantee. <laughs> Ron, Ron has a, a playoff, some kind of playoff guarantee. You know, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to talk to a lot of different GMs and owners in our league, and there's a lot of there's a lot of trash talking going on behind the scenes. You know, we work very hard to grow the league, but it's uh, it's amazing. I talk to a lot of these owners on a regular basis. Right now, we have probably five or six teams that have verbally told me they're winning the championship. Jersey, West Virginia. I mean, I met with Tampa on Saturday. And, uh, now, hey, their coaching staff, Stevie Thomas, if you remember him, he's the head coach. Stevie played for the Predators? I don't remember that. I did, I did ask them if they're going to bring back the Zubaz uniforms. And they said, we might have a 90s throwback game. But they were very confident about beating the Orlando Predators. And of course, uh, Jacksonville uh, was talking a lot of trash. So, Nate, I guess the question from the fans are, I don't know who was talking to me, to ask me, I think maybe this guy named Ron was asking me, how many games do you anticipate the Orlando Predators winning in 2021? I would say all of them, but you know, that's... <laughs> how many games are there going to be in the 2021 season? Well, that's a good question. Honestly, I really anticipate us having a 14-game schedule in 2021. Uh, we were, in, games we were thinking year. about a 12-game schedule for 2020, but obviously uh, this COVID pandemic flu, COVID pandemic, you know, uh, sucked. But it is what it is. So we're probably going with the 14-game schedule in 2021. Is my gut feeling. And right now we're looking at. I think we have nine teams right now, probably have 10. We'll, we'll have somewhere between 10 and 15 teams for 2021. 2022. How many? 2021. Between 10 and 15? 21? 2021. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here, boss. Better? No. Yep. <laughs> We're going to make some announcement sometime this week, maybe. And then after that, we'll see. And we did have a, a question while we have you up here on the hot seat. What about Iron Man? There you go. Yes. 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 That's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Yes. 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 Ultimately, I, like, I love the history of arena football. Nate. Oh, thank you, my knees. Oh, my knees feel like Ben Bennett's knees right now. Uh, there's two things I love about the game, and Iron Man football is one of them. So I, I would love to see us bring that back over the next couple of years. But that's up to owners like yourself to uh, get that done. And uh, there's been a lot of speculation about bringing back the Nets. We've had that question again tonight. So, so. The Nets is an interesting, interesting dilemma because, on one hand, you know, there's, there's a cost involved in the Nets. And. Uh, on the other hand, it's like, you know, how do we make the, the kicking game more interesting without the Nets? So uh, I've been a big proponent of the original arena game, Ironman football, kickoffs off the Nets. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, Nate? Personally, I love the Nets. 
You heard it here first. Nate is going to support bringing back the Nets. So that's one. All we need is five more teams to get that majority. So uh, yeah, that'd be a great thing, you know, but it's gotta make sense from a business standpoint and long term is we wanna make sure this sport is here for forever, right? For as long as we're alive. Especially with us with the Amway, I mean, as far as the Nets, one of them balls hit that uh, LED board, there's a major cost involved in there, so I have no problem at all with that Nets. <laughs> actually, in the Amway Center, in the Amway Arena, the Nets would actually be a good thing. Yes. Because it would actually protect some of the lighting that, that would normally hit the lighting. Correct. So we could probably convince the Amway Center to bring back the Nets. So we've got one vote in Orlando. we got to win over Jacksonville, Tampa, and at, and at least four or five other teams when we get the Nets back. So it's definitely something in consideration. I would always suggest from a fan standpoint is email me. My email is chris at nationalreleague.com. Please feel free to email me. The more fan support you can get for stuff like Ironman football or the Nets, the more it would justify the owners voting on it and doing it. You know, because when I sit there and talk to expansion teams that are maybe on the horizon, you know, multiple cities that are really excited about the league, one of the things that I tell them is like, for me, it's all about the fans first. So the way we play the game, the way we promote the game, whatever the fans want, I'm all about. So if you guys get petitions together, like maybe online, you get a bring back the Nets uh, uh, petition, or maybe bring back Ironman football petition, the more people you can get involved in that, the better. I'm all for it because we want to see this thing last forever, and we know we've, you know, it's been a, it's been an interesting three three and a half years so far. But the goal is to make this thing long term and make it viable businesses at the team level, and then you know have a place for fans to go out there and have a good time without politics. Exactly. No pressure, Steve. <laughs> no pressure. And the key with our league is there is no politics in our league. It's all about arena football. And that's what we're all about. It's all about the fans. It's all about the fans. So in addition to guaranteeing a playoff game, Nate, what else what other kind of guarantees can you make for the 2021 Orlando Predators? That the fans this year, hands down, will have a better fan experience. No ifs, hands, or bolts. Well, in 20, 2019, you set the bar really, really in an interesting place. We can only go up. <laughs> it made it easy. No shutouts. No shutouts. Yes. No shutouts. Yes. So, no shutouts. No shutouts. Better fan experience. Uh, make the playoffs. Uh, what else? Just, just more, more leniency win. from win. the league. Win. <laughs> there you go, more leniency from the league. Um, well, you know, I, I got to be honest with you because I, I love Ben. Ben Ben was the quarterback back when I first got introduced to arena football back in 1992. And, uh, I mean, Ben was in – I mean, he was a phenomenal quarterback back in the day. And uh, I really think he's going to be a great person to lead this team into the future on the field. Yes. Behind the scenes between Nate and Ron, I, I just – I love the fact that these guys are, are just doing everything proactive, not just with Orlando, but they're doing things for the league that is just – over and above what a typical owner of an individual franchise would do. So uh, we're all a family. The future looks bright. NAL family. Absolutely. And now I take my cars to Nate anytime they need any work. So Starling and Sons does a great job with their automotive and boat maintenance. So anybody that needs any car work, go to Nate and his family. Anything else, Nate? If you need a realtor, there you go. That's true. Buy, sell, real estate, come to me. Or if you want to start a new team in the NAL. Absolutely. You know, all I can say with our expansion, it's been a really, really solid off season so far. I mean, it sucks that the uh, league was, that we had to cancel the league, but, you know, God willing, and, you know, get this election over with, and then the COVID will go away, of course. Uh, 2021 looks to be, be a great year. We can't, can't wait to bring back uh, Guns N' Roses. Welcome to the jungle in the Amway Arena. Exactly. We're looking forward to this, this upcoming year. And, and fans, you know, 
I know I, we talk a lot, and Nate's, you know, you know, it's hard to keep him from talking. But uh, <laughs> you know, if, anybody if you who watched any, the press conference, they know I'm not a talker. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you ever have any questions, please feel free to read, reach out to me by email, Chris at NationalRealEgate.com. I welcome your emails. Uh, reach out to me on Facebook. I mean, I know a number of you guys are on Facebook now, and, and I try to engage as much as possible. And I do do my best to buy my time on Facebook. <laughs> But uh, at the end of the day, we're, you know, I just want this league to be successful. And, and uh, like I tell the coaches and the owners, is the goal is for this to be around for a long, long time. And you know, we'll make our mistakes along the way, but we're going to work very hard to uh, to do the right things and make corrections and, and keep pushing forward. And I see people that I've known for a long, long time out there, and they've been extremely supportive. And uh, I'll just tell you this much. I love the game, I love the fans, and, and uh, we're gonna keep working hard. And when we make mistakes, let me know. We'll do our best to correct it, and we'll, we'll do our best to keep moving forward. And that's the goal. This is all learning experience, so just let us know. Don't be afraid to give me a holler and say, yo, I think we need to change this. And you know what, we'll sit down, we'll talk to Chris, and we'll talk to the other owners. Absolutely. Bring it to the and table. this week is a huge week, sorry to interrupt you, Nate, but this week is a huge week. If everything goes well, and Nate's, Nate's kind of like a Nostradamus up here, and he's got some, some predictions that could happen, and if those things come through, it's really going to be a game changer in a positive way for our league to bring back a team in the North that's been a staple of the history of the football. And uh, there's no pressure on Ron Trudico. Yeah, yeah, Ron, no, no pressure, buddy. To get the uh, lease signed tomorrow. You know, you know, listen, you know, there's a lot of excitement uh, in the future, but, you know, we also have to realize that we've got to basically, we got to stabilize what we're doing now, and, uh, you know, I really think if we had a team in the north somewhere, like in New York, upstate, that it would really, really help us out, and uh, we feel really good about it. Right, Albany? I don't know. I can't confirm or deny that it's Albany, New York. I, I, I've heard the rumor. I've heard the rumor. I've heard it too. There, there's I've a lot of rumors out. out there right now. Yes. Absolutely. But uh, you know, there's a lot of work and there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. And you know, we were talking about it on the side that it'd be nice to just kind of blurt out everything that you know that's going on. But uh, but. Uh, Thanks, Dickie. Just hit me up on Facebook and I'll, I'll give you an LOL or an OMG or a smiley face. <laughs> hint, hint. But uh, the goal is to make sure that, that the great owners that we have in our league, that, that they actually are not losing money and that the fans have a great venue to enjoy their, their experience. And uh, whether we have 10 teams in 2021 or 15, I'm not sure. But I think that we're going to be somewhere in between 10 and 20. So let's just hang on for the ride and we'll wait for some more announcements to come over the next couple of seasons. Somehow I'm becoming the MC of the show right now. Yeah, I have no problem at all. You're doing a great job. So Nate, that, uh, that Hummer H2 that you're working on, how's that coming along? It's coming good. For all your automotive needs, actually Nate and his family do a great job over there at Starling & Sons Automotive. I first found out about Nate's expertise when I posted a, a, a battery online and he texted me he's like, why didn't you come to me? <laughs> so now I bring all my automotive needs to Nate and both marine needs to, to, to Nate and Starling & Sons. And of course, any of your lighting needs, go to Magnolux and Ron Tradico's family. So and that's what it's all about. We take care of our owners and they take care of us. So it's a win-win. We're blessed. We're blessed. One big so, family. So Nate, tell me about Ben Bennett. How do you feel about your coach in 2021? I'd, I'm really excited to watch him out on the field. So I know he put together a heck of a team that we didn't get to use this year. But... Uh, He's got the experience, so I mean, I feel real confident that he's going to bring us to he's going to bring us to the playoffs. I have no doubt. I agree. So Nate's basically guaranteeing, supporting Ron's guarantee that you guys are going to be in the playoffs in 2021, which I'm all for. Uh, ben, Ben's a great dude. I've known Ben for forever since 1992. Actually, it's not that forever; it's 18 years. But I know that Orlando's going to be a better team next year. I mean, that's not really hard to do, but. 
Like they're they're like the the staple team in our league, but in my mind it's like Jacksonville was always like that. Yeah, they're like the, uh, right. It's not like it's like Orlando and Tampa is arena football, right? But, but actually, Orlando, uh, Tampa, uh, Jacksonville has built themselves into being a great franchise. They run a great business. The Sharks are a great team. Yes. They copied the Predators with their colors and all that stuff. I get it. They're the Patriots. Nobody likes them. They pretend they do, but nobody likes them. I don't pretend to like the Patriots. I get it. I'm, honestly, not, I'm not trying to defend Jacksonville, but they are the most popular football team in Jacksonville right now. I mean, they're the only football team in Jacksonville that doesn't have to section off half their stadium to get it to be full, right? Uh, or go to England to play half their home games, right? I mean, come on, who? I mean, who else doesn't see through the Jacksonville? What, what's the other team's name? The, 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 the tornadoes? No, the Jaguars. The Jaguars. Jaguars. The Jaguars has half their home games in another country. That's how bad their fan support is. But we we love the Jaguars to a degree. But the Sharks do a great job. I know the future's bright for the Orlando Predators. And after talking to the Tampa Bay Tornadoes on Saturday, they're very, very confident about what they're going to put, uh, what kind of product they're going to put on the field. Now, I'm not sure they're going to play at the fairgrounds or the Tropicana Dome, but they could play at the original Tropicana Dome with the old Tampa Bay Storm Club. That could be exciting, getting 25, 35,000 fans in that stadium. I look forward to building a relationship with them guys. I really do. Off the record, how do you feel, mate? I love having them. I love having them. We need the war on I-4 back. That's what made it interesting. Let's cut through it. Let's cut through it, mate. You guys are going to... It's going to be a bloodbath between Tampa and Orlando. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I Tampa so. actually requested to schedule Orlando 10 times out of 14 games. They say, give us five home, five away. They, they want to play Orlando every week. That's the only time Nealon's good, so who's that Tebow? Love it. Uh, but no, we've got a lot of exciting news. You know, tomorrow's going to be a big day if Ron signs paperwork and Nate supports that for future expansion in the upstate New York area. Ron, Jimmy. But if we get that deal done, that'll be big. That'll give us 10 teams. And uh, and I'll just say there's a good, good, good chance that we're not done expanding. So, excited about 2021 in the future and uh, honestly without this guy right here I mean it, it's you know as bromance it's gonna sound but we might not even have a league but we'll for Nate Starling to step up to the plate so I appreciate you brother I appreciate the opportunity so. So, uh, one thing I gotta in. say I've had this man here and Rob Storm through thick and thin, has had my back throughout this whole fiasco. And, you know, ups and downs, and you were there. We got your back, brother. I mean, I'm gonna continue taking arrows from crap at the fan, but uh, if it wasn't for them guys, I wouldn't be. I, right I would have gave it up last year. Franchise, and with the addition of Ron Tredico on to the to the situation, I mean, he saved Orlando. He might have saved the league. So uh, I can't thank these two guys enough uh, for what they're doing for our league. And, uh, I just promise to you guys as Orlando Predator fans, best fans in the league, bar, bar none, please reach out to me directly. You got my email. I've mentioned it to you twice. Chris at nationalreally.com. If we're not doing something right, we're going to fix it. And when we're doing something right, just help us, help us progress this and tell us how we can make it better. Tell us what you guys want as fans, and we're going to knock it out of the park. And, uh, and Nate and Ron basically guaranteed a playoff game for the United Brothers this year. Oh my gosh. I'm going to hand over my microphone at this point in time. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Always a pleasure. Thanks for the show. NAL, everybody. Wow, that was, uh, that was something different. That was awesome. It gave me a chance. I got to go to the bathroom. I know. I was I got
going to see some friends. I was going to get up and leave and run to the restaurant. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, selling some 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 predator gators out there. But you know, Chris, always that. always a wealth of knowledge when he comes up here. So without a doubt, without a doubt, he's been a huge supporter. So I really appreciate that. I see. Um, it's funny because I don't know what is going on with my with my laptop, but I got my phone back. And I see Ronnie Hardison's watching, Purvis Adamson is watching. Have Purvis. you talked to Purvis today? I give a huge shout out to Purvis. Shout out Purvis. Love you, boy. Coming, possibly coming back with a here to Chris. Yeah. I'm gonna sit down and finish out the details on that. Call me Purvis. Call me tomorrow. I tell you what, that man had my back left and right last year. Purvis, I tell you He's what, good man. People. I love Purvis. He got a I shouldn't say he got a raw deal, but he got a raw deal. And uh, Carolyn Moak is watching. Carolyn is uh, Nick Jakowski's mom. Carolyn, welcome back. You know, welcome back. Uh, Kara, Kara's watching. Kara was on the show last week. She did a JLB. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I mean, I didn't, it's funny I asked all these dumb questions. It's, I mean, you, you learn get so much. Another personality. Right, she can ride a unicycle. And I mean, have you ever tried to ride a unicycle? No. It ain't. You barely walk. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't gonna go there. Um, uh, what's this? Bart Miller Starling is watching. I don't know if you know her. Um, just the same last name. It, probably no relation. Probably, it's just like, you know. Probably that car leaves the dealership. Oh, oh, thank you, dear. Blind in one eye, my depth perception is wrong. Um, Jason Green watching. Look at that. Uh, Jay Ferguson. Mary Beth Scott is still watching. Saying hi, Purvis. Tell you what, she's strong. Christopher Manley is watching. Now you see, you put the commissioner of the league on and you get more people watching. Look, we're at the 19 watching live oh, now. We just wasn't cutting it with me. Uh, you know what? I got to bring you back on here and me step away again. Maybe I'm back. You go ahead and interview and I'll go ahead and step away. <laughs> you know what? I want to get him back on here before, before it all gets over. And I, don't, I don't want any cue cards. I'm going to wing it just like he did to start throwing stuff at you. So what do you think about Ben Beckham? What do you think? Do you think Ben can take you to the championship? I wouldn't have him as my head coach. I wouldn't have him as my head coach if I didn't have faith. That's a great answer. <laughs> I want to uh, I want to throw this out there, and I want to ask you, Steve Morris, and Nancy Morris, and Dickie Owens, and Tom, and all you fans out there. Since we are working on merchandise, getting the merchandise in, what are the fans looking for? I had someone say custom jerseys, things like that. You guys need to let us know what you're looking for so we can have it. Visors. I just heard Philip say visors. You know, so Orlando Predator visors, things like that. We need to know these things so that we have them. Say again. Okay, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. With I, the bling bling. Gotta have the bling bling. Oh, yeah. Okay. Note, note to self, text it to me, email it to me. I've had two Predator shots and three Coors Lights. I, got I ain't going to remember this. I already got you. They're already in the works. So email me, send it to me. You're taking notes, I know, because I believe John has, has, has he contacted you? No? We talked about that earlier, just before the show. Okay, so, but we're working on it. We're working on it, everybody, just so you know. Long sleeve shirts so we can promote all your run. We're gonna go back to the full setup like we used to have in the days. If that gives you any idea. See, that's what, that's what we need. That's what we need. We need your input so we know what you want, okay? Otherwise, it's, you're getting a short sleeve Predator t-shirt out there because nobody let us know. You know, visors, long sleeve shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, polos, uh, shirts with bling bling. <laughs> uh, let's see, Jarrell Little is watching. Jarrell, Jarrell. Shout out my man Jarrell. Showed up. Jarrell always shows up. I know he does, I know he does. Uh, 
Now this is the part, this is the part where I like to say, Nate, do you have any shout outs you want to shout out out there? I gotta give my wife a shout out. She's actually probably down there working right now. Um, well, she's not. She was just watching. And my boys, but don't. She's probably watching from the other house. I gotta give my boys a shout out. Also, give it out to them. Come on up. I asked some people to come on up here. Some of our dedicated breadheads right now. Of course. I don't know where the camera's at. Go ahead and do your shout outs, brother. Good. Okay. All right. Well, if you're done, I can start rolling mine. I want to shout out, first off, Psycho Fever TV. You guys are amazing. Mike, Brittany, IT John, Hank, Crazy John. You guys are amazing. And I really appreciate everything you guys do. Fish on Fire. Thank you for supporting the Orlando Predators in the 2020 pandemic season and the 2021 championship run that we are gonna have, guaranteed by Mr. Nate Starling and Roger Nico. Um, our fan base, I mean, major shout out to our fan base for sticking with us, especially through all this pandemic and stuff and having faith in us to keep, you know, keep moving on with us. So without our fans, we wouldn't be here. So huge shout out to our fan base, our Pred heads. I mean, Orlando can't get any stronger with the fan base we have. Without a doubt. We can I mean, only go up. We have got such a dedicated, strong fan base. And it's, it's, I love it. I just love it. Um, Fish on Fire. Thank you, Heather. Behind the bar, thank you so much. Morgan, taking care of everybody out here on the floor. Steven for running this joint. Jay for owning this place and, and, and having the Orlando Predators back. You guys are amazing. I want to say a shout out to D1 Sports. Thank you for sponsoring us. You got um, Florida Man Radio 105.5. That is Shannon Burke, Bubba Wolfass Wilson. Get better, brother. He just had surgery on his neck. Uh, I want to thank my wife, Mary Lobianco, just for putting up with me because, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm very difficult that's, sometimes. That's a job in itself, right, Mary? <laughs> I want to thank everybody that came in tonight to watch the show and support the printers. I want to thank all you people out there that, that watched, sent in your questions. Steve Nancy Morris, Tom, thanks for what you do, brother. Can't wait for the season to start and see what you got. Hi, right. Tom is our equipment manager. Next week we got a special guest, which I will announce at a date, a later time. I may announce it Thursday on Psycho Fever TV. All right, tune in to Psycho Fever TV. I probably will be on there on guest now so that I can tell you all who's going to be on the show next Monday night here at Fish on Fire. And Ron, um, Ron Zerico and his family, I want to give a huge shout out for having my back this year and believing in me to join forces with me. So thank you from my heart. Absolutely, Ron. Thank you. And I want to thank, I want to thank the commissioner of the NAL, Mr. Chris Siegfried, for coming up. Lovely wife. Asking his questions and just taking over, giving me a break, and just giving you guys some insight on what's happening in the NAL this year and definitely uh, boosted us up a little bit. We love having we love having Chris on board. Uh, that being said, I will see you next time and go Preds. Stay safe. God bless.